After making my first video about the Apex 15, I had more time to investigate and upgrade my machine. After roughly 7 weeks, I can say that I would buy exactly the same laptop again. In my eyes, it got a lot of advantages, but surely disadvantages too. My personal use case is CAD design, 3D and video rendering, and some gaming, mostly competitive and more rarely strategy games. Usually the laptop is plugged into the AC adapter and rarely used in battery mode. For all those use cases, the APX15 is great and it's the fastest notebook you can get. CPU performance wise, you know. <laughs> to give you more insight into the advantages and the disadvantages, I want to address some topics in more detail. I was already preparing the video script for all of those topics and realized quite late in the process that the video would be more than 30 minutes long, so I had to cut things down a little. In this video I want to talk about the BIOS, power modes, CP overclocking and undervolting and of course there will be graphs again. Some of you loved them in the last video, so I was happy to see that. Ok, well, introduction done, so let's start. Remember the first video's PPT graph? There was a huge gap between the two lowest and the two highest power modes. In general, they were too close together, rendering power modes less attractive for daily use. XMG actually watched the first video and mailed me soon after. They showed big interest in improving things and released their new BIOS O4 RTR3 soon after. That's great community service you don't see too often these days. So thanks XMG. And by the way, no, I'm not sponsored. I'm just a private user like you are. Back to the new BIOS, it comes with more even spread power modes as you can see in the new PPT graph here. Because the new BIOS version shifted around the PPT values so easily, I asked myself what impact other power targets would have. Using Ryzen Master you can easily set your own PPT values and play around with them. Doing so, you should see a performance behavior comparable to this new graph. As you already can see, the performance decreases quite linear from the highest power mode to around 48 watt. But already at 47 watt, you see a more and more steeper decrease in performance. Unfortunately, the newly set silent power mode at 45 watt seemed to miss the 48 watt sweet spot by only 3 watts. But that story is rather one sided, because I only can take my own Ryzen 3700X into account. The results could look a lot different using the other CPU options available. Furthermore, they also changed the fan behavior for the new 45W silent power mode. As the name suggests, it will run your system over a quieter. It will not stop the fans completely, but let them always run in the lowest idle fan speeds. Always. No matter what load is applied, nor what temperatures are reached. This may be fine for CPU only loads, but could be potentially dangerous for additional GPU workload. The GPU will not get throttled, so can potentially output 115 Watt and heat up way over 80 degrees Celsius or 176 degrees Fahrenheit. I can't imagine this is on the purpose. I hope XMG will correct that in a future BIOS version. I mean, yes, for silent power mode, the fan profile should be quieter and more passive. But just to a certain point, fans should kick in later, at least to keep the components cooler as 80 degrees Celsius. They should not just be idle all the time. I think the existence of such a power mode is rather unhealthy for the system. Nevertheless, this should be very helpful for keeping the notebook right while working in an office for example. Even with some medium load on the components. But make sure that there is no heavy load on the GPU. I can't recommend to play games in this mode. Hardware can die earlier when they are stressed with more heat. The cooler components are, the longer they live, as a general rule of thumb. All the other modes have normal working fans. Unfortunately, there is nothing to tell about early advertised BIOS performance tuning options by XMG. If you missed it, XMG advertised tuning options like CPU voltage tuning and memory tuning integrated into their BIOS. But unfortunately, they were not allowed to publish such a BIOS version yet, because of concerns of their ODM. I don't know who the ODM really is, but I think we are talking about Clevo here. Or Clevo, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. 
Basically, they don't want the RMA rates to increase by too much, just because some people tune their laptops to unreasonable values. But they done it before for the other high-end laptop series. So what's the difference? Well, the Apex 15 or Clevo NH57AF1 or 58H1 needs to be successful without high RMA rates because it is the very first high-end AMD-based Clevo laptop in a very, very long time. So they are just very careful here. But I still hope for some basic BIOS performance tuning options. Something like stop battery charging at 80-90% and especially memory tuning options with possible memory voltages from 1.2 basic to 1.35 volts at least. It would be awesome. It is so important because it matters. RAM speed matters. Memory tuning is known to impact Zen 2 CPUs a lot. A third beloved BIOS tuning option in my eyes would be a manual CPU tuning option, similar to the manual overclocking and per CCX overclocking in Ryzen Master. This very option could be the holy grail to squeeze out even more CPU performance and keep the components still very cool. Okay now, let's talk about CPU overclocking and undervolting then. And this topic is huge, let's dive into it. You may ask yourself why you should touch the CPU settings in a notebook with a fairly low thermal headroom. Well, I personally don't like components to one hot too, so don't worry. I will not extend the Apex 15's performance by increasing heat and decreasing its lifetime. I aim for lowering the temperatures and fan noise while keeping the performance. Or maybe we can increase it a little and still keep the temperatures low. Well, let's see. There's no voltage offset setting right now, but to be honest, multiple reviews about undervolting the Ryzen 3000 processors showed that it may look good at first glance, but can actually decrease the performance by a lot. Our only other option is manual OC or manual overclocking as found in Ryzen Master. It allows to set the core frequency to a fixed value for all cores or for each core individually. At least in theory. It turned out that tuning single cores has a strange effect of only the highest target frequency will get applied and all other cores fall, fall back to the base clock of 3.6 GHz in my case. I don't know if this is a bug or uh, something Apex 15 specific, I'm not sure, I don't know. But what is working fine is activating the mirror option and set all cores to the same maximum frequency. In short, I try to set my 3700X to an all-core overclock of 4.15 GHz. To maintain a low power consumption, I chose a quite low core voltage of only 1.165 volts, resulting in 82W power draw in Cinebench R20, which is roughly the same as in performance mode. My second setting I tried was all-core 4 GHz at 1.075 volt, resulting in a Cinebench R20 power draw of only 65 watt, which is on the same level as entertainment power mode of course. The results and stability may vary, because Silicon Lottery always plays a strong role here. Performance wise those fixed all-core frequencies are very beneficial for our Cinebench R20 score. We can increase overall multi-core performance to around 5000 points using 4.15 GHz and to very respectable 4800 points at 4 GHz. Both settings draw less power than their power mode counterparts but offer significantly higher performance. The downside of doing so is of course that your CPU will not go to the advertised single core boost frequency anymore. But to be honest, single core loads are very rare in reality anyway. Even if you lose your precious Cinebench R20 single score, there should be no downside in real world applications like games and especially not in rendering. Another promising tuning option can be to tune the processor's CCX modules individually. That makes sense, especially for higher CCX count CPUs like the 3900 and 3950X. My 3700X got only two CCX modules, so one CCD, so the benefit would be lower. Feel free to experiment with that option and you are welcome to report your observations. 
If you want to find the lower voltage limits of your Ryzen 3000 processor, I can recommend to use Cinebench R20 for testing. If your settings are close to the limit, Cinebench R20 crashes softly without issuing a blue screen already. If you experience such a crash, dial up your core voltage by one or two steps again. After that, you should perform some long-term testing with other tools before you can call the settings stable in any way. And it can be very annoying to use Ryzen Master for daily use. Because Ryzen Master will not apply your CPU overclock you found after a reboot automatically. The tool Zen States can come in handy here. It offers pretty much the same functionality and also got the ability to apply your settings after startup. Normally overclocking is known to potentially shorten the lifetime of your components due to higher power draw and temperatures. But it should not be the case here. Overall voltage and power draw in idle and under load is lower than with the regular power modes. Battery life can benefit from that a little too, but don't expect too much here. We are still under 90 minutes in light load conditions, like web browsing, watching videos and so on. This notebook is not made to run far away from the AC adapter. In the end, it turns out that the temperature and fan behavior is also better using manual OC in Ryzen Master. Remember the strange temperature spikes I addressed in my first video about the AVX15? It is the unfortunate temperature reading TCDL TDI used by the notebook's fan controller and let the fan spin up while only web browsing sometimes because of those spikes. As shown before, it tends to be very spiky and shows temperature difference of around 10 degrees Celsius in just a few seconds, while the actual TDI reading still looks super chilled. But as explained, it's not an APX15 specific problem. It is common in Ryzen desktop systems too. And finally, let's take a look at the different power draws we achieve with our manual overclocking and undervolting, of course versus the regular power modes, which are using PBO, or also called Precision Boost Overdrive. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, in 1080p and high preset, we see no effect on the average FPS whatsoever, simply because we are GPU bottlenecked. You can easily see that the GPU part pushes less FPS than the CPU could deliver. Power draw, on the other hand, is noticeable different. Looking at our highest power targets, we can clearly see that the game in 1080p is never demanding more than 53W of CPU power. That's also the reason for the very similar results for the 88W performance mode and 65W entertainment mode. Both power modes will draw the same power, will deliver the same FPS and generate roughly the same amount of feed. Simply because they allow the processor to run fast enough until the RTX 2070 becomes the bottleneck. Only the 45W power mode is not fast enough for more computation heavy scenes, like the one with the village seen in the very end of the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark. Our manual OC settings show pretty much the same behavior, but they manage to draw less power for the same performance. The 4.15GHz with its 1.163V core voltage is very close to the 88W performance power mode just as seen in the Cinebench R20 graphs. Finally, the 4GHz and the 3.9GHz uh, manual OC offer less power draw and therefore generate less heat, which can also be seen in the lower peak CPU temperatures. Another game I was checking out is Witcher 3 in 1080p and it rhymes uh, <laughs> and the highest ultra preset. For the test, I used the same save point at Hyrax Square in Novigrad over and over again because there's no real benchmark available. The story here is very similar to the Shadow of a Tomb Raider benchmark. The GPU is the limiting factor again, so we see the same 96 FPS in all settings and the power drawer and heat behaves pretty much the same as before. Even if the processor still got some headroom in those benchmark scenes, it does not mean it behaves just like in those two examples in every game. Both used games are not very CPU heavy, but other games could be, and you would be happy to have some extra performance headroom using manual OC. And because of this, I was looking for another game which we could try out to see the real benefit of manual OC and undervolting. 
it was very hard to find one, to be honest. A game known to the CPU heavier side is Anno 1800, and in fact, it comes with a benchmark. But again, most times this, the GPU is the limiting factor, not the CPU. Only in the very populated inner city areas, when you zoom all the way out, you can see the CPU bottlenecking. And in the end, let's talk about tweaks to improve your experience with your Apex 15. I found that some users and the reviewer website NotebookJack themselves experienced some thermal issues with the Apex 15 combined with the Ryzen 3900 CPU. They measured up to 85 degrees centigrade and 60 dBA while running Witcher 3 in ultra settings. I can't confirm that with my configuration. Unfortunately, I only got my own Ryzen 3700X to run all those tests you saw in this video and I never reached those temperatures. But I think the advices shown you in this video should help you out too. Remember, we managed to drop up to 9 watts of power and 8 degrees Celsius without losing any frames per second. The power savings could be even higher with the 3900 or 3950X due to the higher core count. But I don't know, to be honest. If you have not bought your Apex uh, 15 yet and ask yourself which processor you would want to have inside your notebook, I can recommend the Ryzen 3700X as a good all-rounder. There are several hints in the internet about higher general power draw by the 3900 and 3950X even if they run in the exact same 65 watt power configuration as the 3700X and 3600. They seem to draw more power in general and therefore generate more heat that need to be dissipated. But to be honest, I can't be sure about that. I couldn't test other processes than my personal one. So handled information about possibly higher temperatures with care. Another always advisable thing to do is to limit your frame rate to a reasonable value. Just in case you don't know what effect unlimited frame rates have on your computer, it always let them try to run at the fastest possible speed and will draw as high as possible power and generate a lot of heat. If you limit your frame rate to a reasonable value, for your use case, you can keep your components cool and the notebook wider. For example, if you're running a 60Hz monitor, an external one, you should limit the frame rate to 60fps. Sure, you got a 144Hz monitor inside your Apex 15, but you can ask yourself if you really need 144Hz in every game or the game of your choice. For a competitive game, yes, absolutely, but for anything else it is mostly only nice to have. But I totally understand that you want to run your games in 144Hz when you bought a computer with a 144Hz uh, monitor inside, of course. As a conclusion, I would highly recommend to try out manual OC in combination with a fixed frequency and underwatering yourself. The benefit are lower temperatures and a longer lifetime for the components. In some cases, you can even gain some minor frames per second, but in most modern titles the GPU will be the bottleneck anyway. So don't expect too much. That's it for this video. I think it should be part 1 of maybe 3 videos about tweaking and tuning the XMG Apex 15. Next up will be DRAM memory tuning, which can be super complex. But if you hoped for more FPS in your favorite games, this is the video you should watch out for. There is surely a lot to talk about. The third video will probably be about noise measurements, your frequently asked questions and GPU tuning. The 7% performance gap to the new RTX 2070 Super should be no problem to overcome with some tweaking. Nothing more to say then, thanks for watching, until next time, bye.